Now the next uh, kind of uh, base logarithm that uh, is used um, in a lot of uh, real life uh, situations is the natural logarithm. Now you remember that previously we introduced uh, Euler's number which was E, which was um, a 2.718281828 and it just kept going. This was a transcendental number, it was a non-repeating, uh, non-terminating decimal number but it has special properties and uh, it was called the exponential function when we had y equals e to the x. Now, there are a lot of uh, practical applications for this particular kind of logarithm in base e. And so we're going to uh, talk about this, particularly uh, for the sciences, economics, and uh, particularly in what's called growth and decay. When things are changing and they're growing, then this number e comes into play. And also when it's decaying, in other words, it's decreasing. So we'll first of all define this. So for all positive x, ln of x is equal to log in base e of x. Okay, so this is called the natural log. And uh, the natural logarithm, and of course you'll see this ln button on your calculator. So we're going to put that to... Uh, to a use here as far as the calculator is concerned, but basically what this represents is, right, ln of x represents the exponent to which e must be raised to obtain x. So just like uh, normal logarithms, if I took a, e to the ln of x, this would be x. If I could took ln of e to the x, this would be x because these are inverse processes. So let's do an example here. So let's use a uh, user calculator Right to uh, find the values. Right, and um, let's say of a, which will be the ln of uh, e to the four. Now, of course, we don't need a uh, calculator to do this because the ln undoes the e, so that would just be four. Right, based on this over here. Right, part b. Let's suppose I want to find the uh, ln of three forty one. Now we need a calculator to do this, All right? So we bring our calculator up. Now you'll notice here, right, that we have 341 and now we have the LN button, which is right here. And so notice that we end up with 5.83188, if we take it to five decimal places. Right, part C, let's suppose I want to find the uh, ln of 0 0.06894. Right, again, we're going to need to use um, a calculator. So we're going to uh, point 0 0.06894, and now hit the ln button. Notice we get a negative number, 2.67. Uh, negative 2.67452 if we round it off the five decimal places. Right, so you need to know how to use your uh, calculator to calculate these. Now the next thing we want to do is look at some of the application models that occur with the natural log function. Right, you'll notice uh, our first application has to do with geology. Now geologists um, Sometimes we measure the age of rocks by using what's called atomic clocks. By measuring the amounts of potassium-40 element and the argon-40 in the rock, it is possible to find the age T of the specimen in years. Notice that it's in years. Okay. And the formula we use is T in years is given by 1.26 times 10 to the 9 uh, times by the ln of 1 plus 8.33 um, of the ratio of the argon to the potassium, all divided by the ln of 2. So A and K are the numbers of the argon-40 and potassium-40 respectively in the specimen. So in this case here, let's suppose in part A, all right, let's uh, determine how old is a rock in which Right, A is equal to K. So in other words, the amount of argon is the same as the amount of uh, potassium. <clears throat> so in this case here, notice that T is equal to 1.26 times 10 to the 9 
right, the ln of 1 plus 8.33, right, now this time we have a over a, if you like, because a is equal to k, or k over k, doesn't really matter, over the ln of 2. So this is really equal to 1.26 times 10 to the 9 by the ln of, now notice here that this is 1 here, so it's going to be ln of 1, uh, 9, 1 plus 8.33 is going to be 9.33 over the ln of 2. So now we apply our calculator to this. Alright, so you'll notice that we have uh, 9.33, uh, take the ln of it, divide by 2 and take the ln of it, and that's equal to this. And now we times by uh, 1.26 exponent to the 9 and that comes out to be equal to a pretty large number so we need to uh, write this right as uh, notice that we have uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 there's a million all right 7 8 9 so we're talking about billions here so it's rounded to 4.06 billion years all right, let's look at um, part B. All right, let's look at how old is a rock in which, right, the ratio of A over K is actually equal to 0 0.325. Okay, this is actually 3 eighths. All right, so we've got 3 eighths as the ratio of the argon to potassium. So remember, T is equal to 1.26 times 10 to the 9. And now we have the ln of 1 plus 8.33 times 0.325, because that's what the uh, ratio is right there. Okay, and then we have it all divided by the ln of 2. So this is going to be 1.26 times 10 to the 9. All right, so the, by the ln of, let's do that calculation first. So let's do uh, 8.33 8 times 3.25. Oops, did that wrong. Uh, 8.33 times 0 0.325, I should say. And we get that and now add 1. So we end up with um, the ln of 3, 3.70725 all over the ln of 2. Right, so this now we're going to look at that calculation. Let's take the ln of that and divide it by the ln of 2. And now multiply it by 1.26 exponent to the 9 and that is equal to notice here we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again 7, 8, 9, we're into billion so it's going to be close to 2.4 2.4 billion years okay and so uh, there we have uh, the um, how to do that particular model. Right, the next one has to do with uh, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Right, in this case, uh, the model has to do with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that traps uh, heat from the sun. Now, the additional solar radiation trapped by carbon dioxide is called radiative forcing. All right, radiative forcing. All right, it is measured in watts per square meter. Okay. And in 1896, the Swedish scientist uh, Svent Arahanis, I guess his name is, modelled radiative uh, forcing R caused by additional atmospheric carbon dioxide using this particular function. And you can see here that it involves the natural log. All right, now, in this case here, all right, we have um, C, all right, um, zero is going to be what's called the pre-industrial amount of carbon dioxide. All right, so the pre-industrial um, carbon dioxide, all right, 
is a estimate of how much was there before industry started uh, in a big way. And C is the current carbon dioxide level. And K is a constant. Okay. Now he determined that uh, K was between 16 and 10 when C was twice the uh, pre-industrial amount. So in this particular case, all right, what we want to be able to do here, all right, is part A, let's find the um, rate of right, uh, forcing All right, uh, given right, that C equals twice C0, and in this case, K is equal to 14. Okay, so R, of course, is equal to K, which is 14, and the ln of C, which is now 2C0 over C0. All right, so the C0s are cancelled, so I end up with 14 ln of 2. So we get our calculator, right, and we take the ln of 2 and times it by 14, and we end up with 9.7. So this is approximately 9.7, and of course, remember the, um, it's measured in watts per meter squared. Right, part B. Right, let's suppose the average, let's find the average. Right, so let's find the average uh, global temperature. Right, average global temperature. Uh, increase right to the nearest degree Fahrenheit all right under all right the conditions that um, of course we have uh, C equals 2 C 0 K is equal to 14 and we know that Part of this uh, model tells us that the increase in temperature, T, is given by um, TR, which is equal to 1.3R. Okay. All right, so in this case here, we do have R. So T of 9.7 is going to be 1.3 by 9.7. All right, and this is going to be approximately... with our calculator. All right, so we're going to need to times this by 1.03, and we get 9.999, so let's round it to the nearest uh, degree, which will be 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So that'll be the increase in temperature, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that's how we uh, model global warming. Right, now the next very important thing, and this is a really important uh, part of um, logarithms, is what's called the change of base theorem. Now, so far we have the common log, which is base 10. We have the natural log, right, which is base E. Now, these are the only two that your calculator will do, but, of course, there's an infinite number of bases. And so we do have a change of base rule. It's not actually too hard to, uh, to prove, okay, because uh, let's suppose that we have, um, and we do know that if we have y is equal to uh, log in base a of x, well, then what does that mean? Well, if I put this in exp exponential form, this is saying that a to the y is equal to x. Now, if I take now the log in base B of both sides, then using my uh, 
properties of logarithms, this would be y log in base b of a equals log in base b of x. So in other words, y is equal to log in base b of x divide now by log in base a, uh, sorry, of b in of base in base b of a. Y, of course, was what? This thing. So this was log in base a of x is then simply equal to log in base b of x over log in base b of a. So to change the base, all I need to do is take the, the log in the new base of the x, all right, or the number, and then divide it by the log of the, in the new base of the uh, original base, okay? All right, so let's look at um, examples of this. So let's suppose we want to use the change of base right theorem to approximate all right, to four decimal places. Right, each of the following. Right, part A. Right, let's suppose I want to look at log in base 4 of 20. Right, now notice here that uh, we have a couple of choices here. Okay, and um, our choices are that, of course, uh, we can use the natural log or the common log, and it doesn't really matter. You'll get the same answer. Right, so in this case, let's suppose I take the uh, natural log of 20 and therefore divide by the natural log of 4. And of course, we're going to need a calculator to do this. So I'm going to have a 20, take the log of it, divide by 4, take the log of it, and that's equal to, notice it's 2.1609, so to four decimal places, uh, it's going to be uh, one, uh, sorry, 2.610. Six one zero. Now, even if I did, um, and let's show that it is the same. Let's suppose I did it in log ten. All right. Then notice here, if we do it again, we're going to have twenty, but we take the log ten now, and then divide by uh, four and take the log ten of it, and it's equal to this. Notice we get exactly the same answer. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one we use. All right, we'll always get the same answer. All right, part B. <clears throat> Let's suppose I want to look at log in base 2, right, of 0.7. Okay, so we can, again, we can use either one of these. We can use the uh, natural log or the log in base 10. So let's look at the natural log again of 0.7 over the natural log of 2. All right, so let's look at that. Right, so here we go, it's going to be 0.7, take the natural log, and uh, divide by 2 and take the natural log equals. Notice we get to four decimal places, it's going to be 6 here, so it's 5146. Like so. Alright, uh, of course, if we did um, it in base 10, we'll get the same result. All right, so here, all right, we get 0.7, take the log in base 10, divide it by uh, 2, and log in base 10, we get this. Notice we get exactly the same answer. Right, and that's, that's using the, uh, the change of base theorem.